Good morning, friends. Today I am going to explain related to brittle coatings. I, Professor Suprit Maji from SGBAT Belgaum, in the department from the Department of Mechanical Engineering. This is the syllabus which is for eight sem mechanical uh, related to brittle coatings, which comes under module five. Now, the brittle coating example, the real time example of the brittle coating is your our chocolate bar, right? where the layer of brittle chocolate is applied over the ice cream. When you just find the choco bar, we can observe that the chocolate layer gets cracked and this type of crack is nothing but the brittle crack. This method is used for demonstrating the experimental stress analysis using the brittle coatings. The crack, what are the dimensions of the crack has been measured and whatever the properties of the cracks are there, those have been measured, which is the basic principle for brittle coating. Okay, brittle coating is usually applied uh, on the ductile metal where this principle of stress analysis involves the adherence of the thin coating brittle in nature uh, on the surface of the specimen. When the specimen is subjected to external loads, the thin brittle coating cracks under the tensile stress when it is applied to the tensile. Strain produced in the specimen is transmitted to the coating resultant, resulting in the coating cracks. That means we can it is brittle coatings can be uh, the brittle coatings can be get cracked up more in case of tensile as compared to the compression. In case of compression, uh, the load the brittle cracking, cracking is bit difficult. It requires a different techniques. And the wear of the coating is quite complicated and it dependent on the number of parameters influencing the behavior of the coating such as coating thickness, coating temperature, creeping coating during testing, moisture, velocity of air flow of coating, curing time of the coating, load time history. The use of coating is limited to identifying the region of high stresses and the region of low stresses. This technique is providing a simple and direct approach for large class of industrial problems such as pressure vessels. This method is based upon the perfect adhesion of the thin coating written in nature on the surface of the components to be analyzed for stress. This technique is used for determination of the stress concentration in the components subjected to various types of load. The measurement of thermal and residual strains in the advantages of brittle coatings are this technique can be directly applied onto the prototype or the machine part. There is no necessity of any model. Analysis or the conversion of the stress to the in the required form is not much complicated. Disadvantages are the behavior of coating is strongly dependent upon environmental conditions like temperature and humidity, and number of there are number of variables affecting the which are affecting the sensitivity of the coating. Therefore, it must be properly understood. This technique is more qualitative in nature than coating stress. Now we are going to apply the coating on the specimen of a thickness of around 0.1 to 0.25 mm and the coating is been dried at the room temperature or an, or an elevated temperature after the coating is been dried the loads are applied onto the specimen which is coated with the brittle when the load is been transferred from the specimen to the coating in this case in this code in order to find the coating stresses the load on the specimen or the whatever the strains in the specimen are being equated to the coating layer, are being equated to the coating layer. Okay. You can observe that the specimen is applied with the brittle coating. Sigma 1C and sigma 2C are related with the coating, whereas sigma 1S and sigma 2S are related with the specimen. Similarly, epsilon A1S and epsilon 2S are related with the specimen epsilon 1c and epsilon 2c are related with the coating. Sigma 1 we can observe it's the horizontal stresses, whereas sigma 2 you can observe it in case of the vertical stresses. On the right hand side, we can see the calibration strip wherein on the cantilever beam the graduations are being made. Above that, the brittle coating is being done. As and when you apply the load, the brittle coating will get cracked as that crack dimensions is being measured for further analysis. Now we can observe epsilon 1c and epsilon 2c are the principal stress in the coating specimen. Vc and Vs are the poison ratio of the coating specimen. Ec and As are the Young's modulus of the coating and the specimen respectively. Considering the specimen and the coating actually in the figure by applying the Hooke's law, epsilon 1 
S is equal to sigma 1 S minus V S into sigma 2 S divided by S. Similarly, epsilon 2 S is equal to sigma 2 S minus V S into sigma 1 S divided by S, where V S and V S is the Poisson's ratio for the specimen. Similarly, epsilon 2 1 C is equal to sigma 1 C minus V S in V C into sigma 2 C divided by E C, where E C is the Young's modulus for coating. Epsilon 1 is the strain, and epsilon 1 C and epsilon 2 C are the stresses on the coating whereas we see the poisson's ratio related to the coat now similarly sigma 2c equal to uh, epsilon 2c is equal to sigma 2c minus vc into epsilon 1c divided by ec now since there is a perfect adhesion between the coating and the surface of the specimen i already told you that the stresses on the specimen and is being equated to the stresses on the coating therefore strain on coating is equal to the strain on specimen that we can say epsilon 1c is equal to epsilon 1s, epsilon 2c is equal to epsilon 2s, where s is for specimen, c is for coating. Thus, we can say sigma 1c minus vc into sigma 2c divided by ec is equal to sigma 1s minus vs into sigma 2s divided by es. On the same basis, sigma 2c minus vc into sigma 1c divided by ec is equal to sigma 2s minus vs into sigma 1s divided by es. That means we are equating the coating stresses with the help of or coating strain with the help of with the, the specimen strain. Okay. Thus, solving equations 1 and 2, there is uh, we get the relation for the coating stress of sigma 1 c along the horizontal direction is given by E c divided by Es into 1 minus V c square into bracket 1 minus V c into V s into sigma 1 s minus V c minus V s into sigma 2 s. Yes. Similarly, sigma 2c is given by ec divided by es into bracket 1 minus vc square into bracket 1 minus vc into vs into, into sigma 2s minus vs uh, vc minus vs into sigma 1. Yes, these are the equations which is giving the coating stress along sigma 1 direction and along sigma. Now, the crack patterns as in when we get the sigma 1 and sigma 2 value, if sigma 1 is greater than 0 and sigma 2 is less than 0 and sigma 3 equal to 0. Here the dominating is the sigma 1, therefore the cracks will be in the direction of sigma 1. On the same basis, if sigma 1 greater than sigma 2, which is both are greater than 0 and sigma 3 equal to 0, here the cracks will be, some of the cracks will be in the uh, sigma 1 direction and also there will be cracks in sigma 2 direction. Sigma 1 is equal to sigma 2 and both are equal. If sigma 1 equal to sigma 2, both are greater than 0 and sigma 3 equal to 0. The cracks will be in the crease patterns. There is no definite direction of the cracks in this case. If sigma 2 is less than sigma 1, which is less than 0, sigma 3 equal to 0. Here, if there is no possibility of the cracks in case of brittle coating. Now, crack detection. Okay. So, once the load is been applied onto the specimen which is coated with the brittle coating, you will get the cracks. And these uh, cracks need to be detected. Okay. So, first method is oblique incidence method. A focused light must be directed at an oblique incidence to the surface and normal to the cracks for observing small areas. This is a very good method. However, it is very much time consuming. Method is static flux method. This is a form of an electrified particle inspection method. This method consists of applying a special static flux penetrant to the coated test specimen. The surface is then superficially dried, leaving the penetrant in the uh, coating crack and finally an ionized static flux powder is blown over the part. The powder particles which have obtained an electrostatic charge is been blown from a special gun and are electrically attracted to the crack. A dye chain method. Red dye chain can be used with some of the resin based coatings to increase the visibility of the crack pattern. For photographic purpose, the red dye chain is a mixture of turpentine, machine oil and a red dye. The etchant is applied on the surface of the brittle coating for approximately one minute. After the etchant is wiped, the surface of the coating, uh, the coating is cleaned with a. After the etchant is wiped, the surface of the coating, the coating is cleaned with an etchant emulsifier that is soap and water. The dye which has penetrated in the cracks is not removed because it, uh, the, whatever the cracks are there, it will get absorbed by the dye during the cleaning process. Thus, cracks appears as a red fine fine red lines on a yellow. You can observe here, on the crack, the red dye line is formed, which that means the whatever the red dye is there, it is settled into the crack. You can observe here. 
Now the types of uh, brittle coatings, first one is a resin based coating or a stress coat, we can call it as a stress coat. This consists of one third of the zinc resin as a base, dissolved in two third of the carbon disulfide with a small amount of plasticizer. Dibutyl phthalate is used as a polarizer to vary the degree of brittleness of the coating which increases with its increase. The same strain sensitivity of the coating varies from 0.003 to 0.003. It can be applied to the test specimen by spraying by a spraying method. It can be applied onto the test specimen by a spraying method. This coating can be used up to 60 degrees centigrade and absorbs water and oil. The thickness of the coating can be made from 0.1 to 0.15 mm and can be used for macro and micro applications. Stress coat has been employed widely and can be okay. So this is an example which is showing the stress coat wherein epoxy coating is been done. This is ceramic burst coating. It consists of a finely ground ceramic particle suspended in the solvent. It can be sprayed by conventional means onto the specimen upon drying at the room temperature. Uh, the coating presents a chalk-like appearance and which is not suitable for the use. In order to make the coating effective, it must be fired or it must be heated up to 540 degrees centigrade until the ceramic particles melt and coalesce when fired. The coating is a glass-like in appearance and browning. This is an example or the demonstration for the ceramic film or ceramic coating. The above one is the ceramic and below you will be having the metal substrate where a ceramic film acts like a Now the last thing that is the calibration method wherein you will be having the cantilever beam Above the cantilever beam the graduations are being made On that graduation the brittle coating is being applied When you apply the load the cracks will be uh, the cracks will be developed and these cracks is being measured directly onto the calibrating scale. Thanking you.